Welcome back to the Survivor edition of Why Blank Lost. I'm David Bloomberg, and joining me, as always, is the we for my me, Jessica Lewis. <laughs> I'm the we for you me and you know what you are the we for my me as well so this is so lovely to have us here today just the two of us what do you think I know of that? this is the first time I realized the first time this season that it's just us two I know it's a little crazy right I but know we we never used to have guests and then we started having guests and then we had more guests and it's I know lots because of fun. everyone right yeah. wants to be on yeah. why blank lost so but this week was a much different week because someone's been busy. David yes. Bloomberg. Yes, I've been a little bit busy. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I I appreciate the Survivor players helping me out uh, by making things a little easier for me this week uh, in terms of pulling together notes, considering mm -hmm. that we had my son's wedding going on in the middle of all this. Yes. Uh, so, and when I say they made it easier for me, what I mean is that what I predicted last week oh, was there has just been so much buildup regarding Sam and mm -hmm. Sierra and Andy mm -hmm. that it feels mm -hmm. like it has to go somewhere. I've Here been worried go. that Sierra making more of an effort to stick with Rachel and Annika as a so-called fake alliance could end up leading to her making that her real alliance. But she and Sam really do seem solid. So I'm going to say they stick together and along with Andy, line side Annika. I love that you are reading your own self as yes. a quote. Yes. <laughs> this is what David Bloomberg said in case y'all missed yes. it. Yes. Remember, I knew you were going to go there. I was going to well, give you props too, but of course you're just like, look at me. I was right. Yes, I mean, you were right, David Bloomberg. You were you right. You did give me the shirt that I'm wearing. I I know. You know, I it know. says, I for those of you on audio, it says, I may be wrong, but it's highly unlikely. And I should have just listened, but we all know Jessica is very bad at prediction. <laughs> so, but at least my other choice was Andy, or at least my choice was mm -hmm. Andy. So who was the other option for the episode? But unfortunately, I I have a theory and we'll discuss it as we move okay. along as to what is happening with Survivor. Because I do okay. think that there is mm, something of a trend that we see occurring here. Okay. All so, right. But we'll get there. Yes. Yes. In the meantime, you know, I want to say I appreciate seeing Annika's very real reaction. Uh, oh, my word. Yes. You know, it's it's great when players can take it all in fun as part of the game. But mm -hmm. we have to remember how socially involved this game can be. And players are losing yeah. out on their chance for a million dollars after they were stabbed in the back by people they thought were their friends. Yes. And I, I do really enjoy those moments that are so shocking. I mean, the look on her face mm -hmm. was incredible. She clearly had no idea which props to everyone who managed to pull off the blind side because it really truly was a blind side and i also am appreciating the fact that the people who are being voted out are calling out the people who are still yeah. there who have actually voted them out i i really am enjoying that it's not all this like oh good job you got me guys mm -hmm. it's more like a who was that who wants yes. to claim which i do love the little hand raise that was good yes that was yes. very good yeah good stuff yeah yeah i seem to remember someone else getting emotional when they drew a rock well and before they drew a rock for that matter but you know listen and it was real yeah. i mean it was it all was, real you know it, uh, that's that is 100 percent real yeah. emotion because guess what i just lost a million dollars because yes. of a damn rock yes i know i chose to pick a rock I picked the wrong rock anyway. Yes, yes. Let's move on to Annika. Yes. Yes. Because, you know, of course, no matter how a player reacts, we always follow the same path uh, mm -hmm. in, in this podcast, comparing Annika's game to my rules for winning that I originally wrote way back after season one and have been updating ever since using all the non-spoiler information available to us from what we saw on TV, interviews, social media, and secret scenes. Uh, the newest version of the rule can, of course, be found on our website by going to robhiswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed and clicking mm -hmm. on the link bubble for the Survivor Rules. Mm -hmm. Now, before we address how Annika did in terms of those rules, we always have some other things to discuss from the episode. I want to focus on one in particular this time, um, and that would be Rome. Uh, <laughs> 
My uh, boy Rome. Yes. Uh, you know, he was obviously upset that he had been a target before uh, Genevieve flipped it on uh, Kishan last week. Mm -hmm. Now, first, Rome, you know, got back from tribal council, was very upset with Teeny. And I just don't think that's terribly fair, given that Teeny didn't even have a vote. You know, so uh, looking at it from my perspective, there was no circumstance in which Teeny should have stuck their neck out to tell Rome that Teeny's number one ally had turned on Rome. I mean, you know, when, when again, Teeny didn't even have a vote. And not but to she mention, she did mention that to him, though. She reminded yes. him that she didn't have a vote. So she's like, what, what ability do right. I have to negotiate? But, but, Rome still was upset, you know, and saying things like, well, you could have told me anyway. And yes, that's yes. why I think there's no way, um, you know, and not to mention that, as we discussed last week, Teeny, Kishan and Genevieve had talked about going after Rome before. So mm -hmm. Teeny thought everyone was on board. Yeah, but I, I think that this was a smart move for Teeny because you have a player like Rome who is very emotional and is someone who kind of has knee-jerk reactions yes. to things based upon those emotions. And so if she doesn't try to jump in and keep that contained, even mm -hmm. if she shouldn't have, I think for her game, that was the smartest move to make with oh, Rome no. to keep yeah. Rome on her good side. Yeah, I, I'm not saying, you know, that Teeny should have responded any differently to Rome mm -hmm. than, than was done in this episode. I'm saying, okay. you know, Rome was upset saying you should have come to me and told me about Kishan's plan. And no, yeah. that was under no circumstance should Tini have come to him ahead of time. Well, and I and I can understand yeah. that as well. But I also do think and I'm not I'm not necessarily defending Rome because he mm -hmm. is my winner pick. But I will say that he was my rock winner pick right over here uh, that. Again, this is a game of Survivor, and we just commented how we appreciate the genuine reactions mm -hmm. that people have when they get voted out. So I think that there is also a very genuine reaction to when you see your own name yeah. and you're like, oh, crap, like this is real. And it can mm -hmm. be very frustrating. And depending on the circumstances, you might want to react one way, you might want to react another and you have to kind of read the room. Now, is Rome reading the room? I don't know, because he seems to kind of read his own room all the time. Um, so he's probably missing some things. But at the same time, I can understand him also having an emotional response to learning that he was kind of the other option or the right. other plan. So I I can understand him having that type right. of reaction to that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, uh, you know, I think he went a little further by deciding in that state that he was in to spill every tribal secret to Saul. Oh, uh, listen. Yeah. You know, and then this caused Saul to be to completely reevaluate what he believed he knew about the tribe. So he was in the dark. Rome mm -hmm. shined the light on him. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I suppose from that standpoint, Saul was lucky. He found out when Rome told him rather than finding out by getting blindsided at a tribal council. Sure. Uh, and you know, but Rome was not so lucky because Saul then immediately turned around and told Genevieve everything. So yeah. now she believes Rome turned on her and Rome's closest ally may have just become his enemy. Listen, this is another trend. Trend number two. I haven't even talked about the first one yet. So you're going out of order in your tribe. I am going out of order because I have to. What is happening with everybody telling everybody everything? Yeah. This entire episode, this entire season, I'm about to lose my mind. I, I, I don't get it. There are no secrets. It's like, oh, there's a new person. Let me tell the new person everything. And yes. then they're like, oh, there's a new person over there. Let me tell that person everything. And who cares who's sitting near me and who might actually hear me spilling the beans about everyone on my tribe? What is happening? Yeah. And, you know, I said I wanted to focus on this, but of course that applied to Tiana oh. being that, you know, Gabe being the only person from their tribe who wasn't there. And Tiana just spilled, just throws Gabe under the bus. Everything. Everything. It's like, I mean, she had to know someone was going to tell him. I'm just, I'm so stunned that like, that's the, you know, the survivor yeah. telephone was mentioned by 
Annika, but it's not the survivor telephone necessarily. It's what do you expect is going to happen? Mm -hmm. You are you are literally throwing your own people under the bus to people that you've known now for five minutes because you got to eat a terrible looking hot dog with them. And then suddenly you're like, oh, let me tell you all the tea. And they're doing it on every journey. It's the same thing, all the tea. And, and people are wondering why, like Annika talked about it in her exit interviews where she went on a journey and she was asked about Sam and Sierra. And she's like, maybe I shouldn't have said anything. You think? I mean, it's like, come on. I come just, on, do it. Do it your official way. You think? Yeah, <laughs> much better. <laughs> I, so I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that there is this idea that there will be no ramifications for this honesty that everybody mm -hmm. feels like they need to have. Stop it. Knock it off. It's survivor. You're supposed to lie. You're supposed to not tell people everything. And that's okay. Like people don't expect you to come with all mm -hmm. of the goods. Give them a little bit if you want, but you don't have to give them everything. Yeah. Going back to Saul telling everything to Genevieve, I do wonder if it was because he was hearing it from Rome, they obviously did not mm -hmm. have a good relationship before. And it was more oh. like, I'm just going to bounce this off of Genevieve and see what her yes. reaction is. And I feel like the Saul conversation with Genevieve was mm -hmm. different than like the journey conversations or the, mm -hmm. the hot dog reward conversations because Saul is, I think checking in because Saul has been mm -hmm. left out of so much and hasn't been involved. And Rome has been a bit of a jerk to him on a lot of occasions. So now all of a sudden Rome wants to come to him and say, Hey, by the way, I'm going to fill you in on everything. I can understand him fact checking that because of the position that he's in. That makes more sense. But a lot of these other things just don't make any sense at all. Like Rome didn't have to go to Saul and tell Saul everything. And like, the people at the rewards don't have to tell everybody everything. There is there is a choice that you need to make in regards to what information do you share? Because we've talked about this a lot too. Like knowledge is power in Survivor, right? The more that you know, that can allow you to negotiate. It can allow you to manipulate people. It can allow you to kind of feed little mm -hmm. seeds of information and just kind of let things fester and see what happens. But to just be throwing up all over everybody with everything, it, it, you lose all ability yeah. to manage the information that you need to manage and to use it to your benefit because everybody knows it's all it's all been aired. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, besides Sorry, so that was trend two. So is trend one going to come in the rules or do you want to talk about it before the rules? I guess I could talk about it now, but uh, are you, am I, I gonna I, am I gonna get mad at you for jumping into the rules ahead of time? No, I okay. see I because I'm not really sure where this necessarily falls. And like I have to be very I, because now I'm like, oh God, maybe it does fit somewhere. i'm I'm struggling with where it would actually fit, okay because it it goes back to the the choices here between Andy and Annika as probably the, appendix A then. Okay. All right. See, yeah. so I, I went there yeah. first. I'll wait. I will you wait. You dipped your toe in the water. A shark came up and took a snap at you, and you were like, okay. Yeah, he was I'll named wait. David Bloomberg. Yes, it's possible. <laughs> so, yes, I will wait. I will wait for trend one then. Okay. All right. Well, uh, there were, of course, other things going on, and I. Uh, e even in the middle of wedding weekend, I, I put some of them up on my YouTube shorts at uh, David Bloomberg TV um, and more will be coming. Uh, but before we get to how Annika did, we want to mention that the rules we're about to discuss uh, come in a shorter and much more colorful version. Yes, they do. Uh, in poster form, go to robhaswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed, scroll down to the poster, click on it, order it. Our shipping department will rush it out to you. Yes, I will. Um, you're ruining the illusion again. Um, <laughs> or you could keep scrolling, or and you can keep scrolling, uh, and get the poster on a t shirt, or and the checklist on a t shirt. Uh, get them all, so get them all, get the whole collect the whole set. Uh, that's right. so, so again, that's Rob has website.com slash yx lost feed, uh, for all your poster and t-shirt needs that's right <laughs> well going back all the way to our preview podcast we worried about annika project managering mm, in survivor mm -hmm. and 
there she was. <laughs> um, Annika, however, told Dalton Ross that she didn't think her bossiness or taking on a leadership role is what sent her home. And that's not why Sam was gunning for her. Is she right? Were there other factors that were even more important than the way she treated Sam and others? Let's dig into everything and sort it all out. Because at RHAP, we know Survivor, and we know why Annika lost. That's right. The first and most important rule is, of course, the scheme and plot. And it definitely seemed like Annika understood this. According mm -hmm. to her interviews, in her mind, she had been in a core four alliance with Rachel, Sam, and Sierra since day one. Though she and Rachel, as a duo, also found themselves in the middle between Sam and Sierra on one side and John and Andy on the other. Now, after Andy had his moment in and after that first immunity challenge, and then John was apparently being too sneaky for them, it pushed them towards the Sam and Sierra side as those two kept reassuring them. Mm -hmm. Then this continued as she talked about Sierra pushing the Women's Alliance as well, while uh, Sam spoke openly about how annoying Andy was. All of this combined to make her feel so secure that she said in confessional after they got back from losing this immunity challenge that she wasn't worried that she lost her vote because, quote, I know where my alliances lie. And she was sure Andy was going. Uh, and that certainly extended into tribal council, where we saw, as we mentioned, her very real and raw reaction to being voted out which was basically her entire world falling apart out from under her because everything she believed she knew turned out to be wrong. Yes. And this is, you have to attribute all of that work to everyone else who was mm -hmm. on the tribe. And I don't want to give as much credit to Andy as Andy wanted to give himself in this no. whole. Sorry, structure. Andy, I agree. <laughs> it's like, this was Sierra and Sam really working their magic Mostly, I think, Sierra, because she was the one who was really kind of bouncing between mm -hmm. the two the most and having to make a decision. So as as much as Andy wanted to dance on her grave or whatever it was yeah. that he said dig he was going grave. to do, yes, he, dig her grave. Yeah. Um, sorry, Andy. Yeah, that, that you were not I, the deciding factor here. I have to admit that entire segment still confuses me a bit. Like what? They were trying to show us because from what we knew, I mean, unless it was the, the editors trying to say Andy's a mastermind, which Andy's a very smart guy. Don't get me wrong. But right. this was all set up without him. Yes. I, did it did it make Rachel and Annika feel even more secure? Yes, it did, because mm -hmm. they believe they had pulled a fast one on Andy. Right. So maybe the whole scene was set up to make. Annika's fall that much more dramatic. Mm, and that's so possible. Show us that she thought she was pulling a fast one on Andy, but in fact, Andy and company were pulling a fast one on her. Yeah. But if it was meant to show that Andy was masterminding this whole thing, no, it didn't show that. Not at all. No, it really didn't. And so I thought it was really quite amusing that it, yeah. it because this this decision really boiled down to so many pieces coming mm -hmm. together and it wasn't just one person that was right. necessarily making it all happen. Well, and he said the three of us, <laughs> he, want, he wanted some credit. He was yeah. like, Oh no, there was, there's three votes. Yeah. Sam's like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. CR didn't say anything. So no. Her. <laughs> yeah. She just sat there. But anyway. Yeah. And, and I mean, really, uh, you know, most of this is a case of Annika being out strategized by Sam and Sierra. Sure. Yes. Um, but part of it falls back to Annika herself, because let's think about this. Players on other tribes were seeing how closely Sam and Sierra were working together mm -hmm. from the outside in just a few minutes of interaction. Right. But she and Rachel didn't see it or believe it themselves. It seemed like a situation mm. where they were like too close to recognize what people on the outside saw. And the fact that she told them about what those other players were saying made Sam and Sierra realize they needed to do more to hide it within the tribe, causing Sierra to really appear to go all in with just the other two women. Yeah. And I'm curious if this is also one of those situations where 
uh, and this is something that Annika spoke about in her exit press as well, that she and Rachel wanted to act like they were not as close as they were. And then she said, watching the show back, she was like, my gosh, it was so apparent. And so it's almost like you don't want to acknowledge yeah. the behavior that someone else is doing because then you would have to acknowledge your own behavior. And so I don't, oh no, Sierra and Sam are fine because they're not calling Rachel right. and I out. So we're just going to let it all be and everyone can do their thing. And I'm wondering if that's part of why that ended up happening. Because if you start saying, well, Sam and Sierra, look at you two, they might start saying, well, look at you and Rachel. And right. then it, you end up having a bit of a, power struggle if you will but if nobody acknowledges it it's like no it's not there right yes. and no one says anything yeah and that does take us to the second rule which says not to scheme and plot too much and to keep your scheming secret because we know that there were duos on this tribe mm -hmm. you know there was sam and sierra who were told they were being too honest or too obvious and took actions to counter that idea and then there was of course annika and rachel who broke this rule because everybody definitely saw how tight they were Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and the fact that Andy was going back and forth between the groups, I think, really mm -hmm. also shows how well obvious it was, really, mm -hmm. because he knew who he needed to talk to because he knew who was working with who. Right. Right. And yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, you know, Annika told Mike Bloom that they tried not to make it so obvious, but she said it's funny looking back now. Uh, you know, I, I think you mentioned we have the same hairdo in every single challenge. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're doing yeah. puzzles together. And so now, you know, she's telling herself, what were you thinking? It's so obvious. Right. right. Um, but out there, they thought they were pulling it off. Uh, yeah. and so, you know, I, again, I think it comes back to a matter of being out strategized or outplayed. Both duos knew what they needed to do. Mm -hmm. Both duos attempted to do it. One duo succeeded. Right. Uh, you know, they were more convincing, especially, uh, you know, especially Sierra when it comes to the other two women. Uh, and, you know, but then uh, <laughs> Annika and Rachel were not convincing. And, mm -hmm. you know, one thing we heard Sam worry about was voting out Andy and being the lone guy in a tribe with three women. And, you know, even beyond that, it had to be clear to Sierra as well that even though she was a member of the Breadwinners Alliance, she was the third wheel in that alliance. Yes, yes, very much. And that and I think for someone like Sierra to recognize that speaks to her strategizing and the gameplay that she has, because you don't want to be the third. You want to be the second. And if she's putting herself in a situation where she believes that she's going to be the third, whereas but I, I am curious, though, because Sam and Andy, they seem to be very close, too. So Sierra mm -hmm. might be in a very tough spot. She had to pick, and I totally understand that. I do think that she's closer to Sam than she would have been to either Annika right. or Rachel. So that will work to her benefit. But, boy, Andy is, he is digging in, and Sam is bringing him along. Yes. So. Yeah, I don't know that Sam is... I would say close to Andy. I think it's he's keeping Andy close to him. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's like, yeah. he's like, oh yes, Andy, you definitely right. because Andy's a benefit to him. Right. And and I don't think he's someone that Sam has to worry about. I I really don't think that as long as he keeps Andy happy and content, mm -hmm. then Andy will be a vote for him. Yes, I agree. All right. Well, the third rule tells players to be flexible and we talked about how locked in Annika felt uh, with the other two women plus Sam. Uh, so how do you feel she was in terms of this rule? I think she, it it went back and forth a little bit because I, I do think that she was, she tried with John in the very beginning and she wanted to try to have uh, the ability to work with John. She realized very quickly that it was kind of three against one. And so she knew, okay, I can't do that. So she was making determinations based upon what's going on in the space around her. But I also do think that some of the issues that she might have had was just the, the, I guess, the managerial component of it all, where, you know, she wanted to try to be in charge, even though she had told herself, I shouldn't do that. 
And I think that that certainly could have affected her ability in the game because she wasn't willing to just kind of set that aside and let that be. And I don't need to be in charge and I don't need to tell people what to do and I don't need to to feel like I have to run things. And so I feel like game wise, she was more willing to be flexible with who she was working with and, and try to make decisions based upon, well, this is where the numbers are. But then at the same time, there's the other component of it mm -hmm. where you need to maybe switch some things up about yourself so that way you can maintain those relationships. And some of it got a little bit rocky, even though she says behind the scenes, it, it wasn't as bad as it appeared on the screen. Yeah, I'll have some thoughts about that and a couple of rules here. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, as far as the, you know, the game side, you know, the strategic side, like you said, I, yeah, I agree, you know. She had a plan. She had a backup plan. She had the core mm -hmm. four. She had the breadwinners. Then she had Rachel as her number one. So in a theoretical scenario where things went according to what she thought was going on, mm -hmm. they would have voted out Andy. And then she would have been set no matter what happened after that. Right. The problem was that her actions in that regard were a bit too obvious to Sam. You know, mm -hmm. like, like I mentioned in the second rule, he didn't want to be the lone guy on the tribe. And he knew where that was heading. Mm -hmm. uh, Sierra, in all likelihood, although we didn't hear her voice it, I, I think she's definitely smart enough that she felt the same way about being an add-on to the Annika and Rachel duo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, also, part of this rule is that you need to have your thumb on the pulse of what is going on in the tribe. And clearly that was not the case for Annika here, but it is the case for Sam and Sierra. And so once again, we have this recurring theme. They outplayed her. Yes. Sorry, Annika. Um, getting to the fourth rule, it tells players not to let their emotions control them. Now, I can't think of any problems that Annika had here. You know, we've, we've been talking about her being outplayed, but I don't think it was because she did anything from an emotional point of view. No, I think she really did. She was very game oriented and she was very focused on the game. And I, I so I think overall she kept herself in check until we got to this lovely yeah, tribal well, council. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I totally yeah. understand that right. response. Yeah. All right. Well, then we can quickly skip along to the fifth rule here which reminds players they need to pretend to be nice and play the social game. Now, we saw issues with Annika and Sam uh, that you have already mentioned, uh, you know, and it's clear from Annika's interviews that, again, like you mentioned, she viewed them in a very different light. Mm -hmm. um, now, recall that back in our preview podcast, we worried about her, as I said in the intro portion, project managing. And there she was from the very beginning. She thought that experience would help the experience being a project manager would help her in Survivor because she's learned how to analyze different personality types and could tailor her communication styles mm -hmm. to each one of them. Now, in our preview podcast here, I'm going to quote myself again. I said, <laughs> that sounds like something that may work on paper, but not in real life. We'll see. Yeah. Well, we saw. And I have to say. My shirt says it all. My sign <laughs> says it all. I was right. Uh, you know, even she even told Mike Bloom in her post game interview that she knew not to do it. Like you said, she just couldn't mm -hmm. stop herself. Yeah. Uh, quote, I told myself coming out here, I've seen so many survivor seasons in which the leader is never really looked as someone who goes far in the game. So I did want to make sure to pull it back a little bit. And I also actively tried every single time I had an idea out there, I was also physically doing it. You'll see me moving the bamboo piece. You'll see me tying the clothesline. I want to be as active a participant or as active as a participant as I am someone who's proposing ideas. I think it's really hard at the end of the day when you're starving out there and when you want to sleep on a nice shelter and you want to feel as good as you can to sit back and say nothing. Now, I understand what she's trying to say in terms of, well, I wasn't, you know, it's not so bad because I wasn't just being bossy. I was getting in there and doing it too. I was helping. No, that doesn't help a lot. In reality, no. it just does not help a lot. It reminds me of my own previous boss who thought that because 
she worked 20 hours a day that showed that she wasn't just, you know, uh, being a terrible boss by insisting that other people do all this stuff. No, what it says is you need some work life balance, you know, mm. and and, you know, you it, it does not help with your bossiness. It does not yeah. help with your argumentativeness. Yeah. Just to say, I'm doing it too. Well, especially when, as you're doing it, you're saying things like, cut the clothesline here, here, I'm holding it here, cut it here, cut it this way. Right. Yeah. Even though she was right about how to cut it. But, um, <laughs> you know, and, you know, so she also said, I think, honestly, I personally would have been disappointed in myself if I just sat back in the moment. I didn't feel I, that I was being bossy or too controlling. I don't think any of my actions came off as too strong. I, and I know, I know we got an edited version, but I'm sorry, Annika. I just think you're wrong. Well, and I do think that, you know, this is something that we've talked about a lot as well, is that sometimes you have to keep parts of yourself in the box, right? Mm -hmm. That you need to, you need to determine what parts of yourself are you going to bring into the game and what parts of yourself do you want to keep restrained a little bit? And I, she was clearly very aware of this part of her personality. But if you don't view it as necessarily being wrong or problematic because, well, I'm doing it too, then you're not fully realizing what's happening around you and how people are going to respond to it. I think one of the most honest conversations you have to have with yourself before going out to play Survivor is you need to ask the people around you, what is something that I do that frustrates you? What is something that I do that gets under your skin a little well, this bit? This is why I can't survive, play Survivor. I, I'd never get out there, you know, and people would tell me, I'd, I'd, you know, it would just well, go on and on. Uh, listen, I, these were some very interesting conversations that I, that I had with mm -hmm. people and I, and I've mentioned it where right. someone I work with said, you need to keep Jessica in the box a little bit. Be, and, and I, and I heard that and said, okay, because I understand that I can be different depending on where I am. If I'm in court, I might be presenting myself in a particular way. If I'm around my colleagues and we're discussing something, it might be a little bit different, but you have to be able to read the room and mm -hmm. shift what you're doing. And I think Annika wanted to do that, but she thought that she was being helpful and that it was okay that she was giving directives because she was, she was being involved. It would be one thing if she was sitting back going, you should do this and you should do that. And then she wasn't doing anything, but she thought, no, no, I'm actively involved and it's okay. And, and I think that her tribe allowed her to do that, even if they were frustrated with it, because again, it takes, some of the shine off of right. them. If someone else is the one that's, I mean, the we saw point. it. Andy in the back, just twirling yes, his hair, smiling, right. you know? Yes. Like the yeah, F I'm going to blow on that fire a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to try to make it bigger. And people who play this game, that's what they look for. They look for those moments where someone is, is getting too involved and someone is getting frustrated with the behavior. And, and then those are the types of seeds you can plant because then you could be like, Oh, did you see? Did you see mm -hmm. what Annika was doing? And you could just talk about it. So I think she definitely tried. And I don't think she was coming from like a place of wanting to be problematic. It was just who she was. But playing Survivor, sometimes there are parts of you that you really just need to set aside. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing is. So Annika, so we heard that Annika, you know, felt that, that she was OK, but. What Annika thinks isn't what matters. Yes. You know, and Perception. that's what it goes back to. Right. It's yeah. what the other people on her tribe thought, in this case, most specifically Sam. Because, you know, she even told Mike Bloom she checked with Rachel and Rachel agreed with her. Oh, you're not overdoing it now. Yeah. It wasn't clear to me if she checked in real time or after the game. I'm going to presume real time. I'm going to presume mm. she's not talking about after the game here. Yeah. Um, but it reminds, <laughs> you know, the thing is, you're talking to your close ally and friend. Right. Yeah. It reminds me of a, co a work colleague I had. She was a little Dululu and a little weird. Dululu? <laughs> Delusional. Yes. Uh, she, she was talking. We were in this meeting and we were waiting for the boss to come in. And the boss was very late. So we were just all chatting. And she was talking to someone and was talking about uh, her, her new baby. And it was just the cutest baby ever. Mm. 
Mm. And um, and this person, uh, you know, said, uh, you know, kind of half jokingly, kind of not. Well, you know, of course, you know, as the mother, you're not biased about that at all. And this woman responded, oh, no, no, no. My mother says so, too. As if a grandma is the right. most objective reader of how cute yes. their grandchild is. The actual baby's grandmother, no yes. less. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Very objective. Saying. Very uh, objective. And so that's how I felt when she was saying, you know, well, Rachel says I'm doing fine. Right. I mean, it's, it's not quite as blatant as the example I just gave, but it's no, it's but like, it is a fair, fair point. Yeah. I, you know, it's like the the husbands that are always like, oh, no, your hair looks great, honey. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. They just they're saying it because they know they're like, I'm not I, I'm in a good place right now. with right. this Person. So everything is lovely and, and fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there you know, there can be a difference of opinion, even even from another person who's a close friend compared to the person who feels they're the target. You know, sure. you, you can't ask someone on your side, hey, do you think I'm being too harsh on that person over there? No, you got to right. find out from that person over there's perspective. Yeah, yeah. And and I will I will say too, though, I mean, I do think that, that Annika is someone who, she seemed to get along with everyone very well. So it's, this isn't, a, 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 this isn't, I don't want to sound like we're being really harsh on her with how she was interacting, because I do think that she was trying to develop relationships with everyone and that she really did try to get to know people. Mm -hmm. And she did say that she was the one who was trying to bring Andy, you know, Andy, we've got you. You're OK. She was trying to be a positive reinforcement with Andy there. She was very interested in Sam and the components of his eating, which are very interesting to say the least uh what he does and doesn't eat so i do think from a social standpoint yes she was trying to get to know people and she was trying to be involved and having discussions and and, and forming some type of a bond with each person but there's another part of it as well that mm -hmm. it's not just those social relationships it's just how you are behaving at camp and during the challenges and just in general throughout the game, that that's another part of this that you have to be mindful of, because regardless of what types of relationships you're developing, you can still be rubbing someone the wrong way for just something that you're doing. And I think that unfortunately, Annika was likely doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she thought her relationship with Sam was fine. You know, she mm -hmm. said in her interview, she it felt like a brother sister situation where they would bicker, but then in her words, level set with each other afterwards. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to admit, I, I don't think I've heard that term before, level set. Mm. I don't know if you have. Um, I have not. But it, it must mean something like trying to calm things down between them a bit, because, you know, she even said that was part of the discussion uh, to acknowledge they were both angry and, and you know, she wanted to, to bring it down. Uh, mm. However... It really seems to me that this was a one-sided situation where she thought things were fine and Sam wisely agreed just as mm -hmm. she thought Sam was aligned with her and he wasn't, you know, she also thought Sam was perfectly happy with their relationship and any bickering was minor. Right. And he just, sure. Yeah. Great. Yes. Oh, I totally understand. You were just upset and I was upset. And we're a okay. We're perfectly mm -hmm. fine. You can right. trust me. Right. Of course, that's what, what he's going to say, because yeah. he's he's realizing what's happening. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So. All right. It, it will be interesting because, you know, I, uh, rule five is the one we've spent the longest time on. It may have had the least impact when we're all said and done. But. Oh, um, mm -hmm. I agree. You know, but it, it, I think we still had to set all of that out there just to, to look at it. Of course. Um, but we can move on to the sixth rule, which warns against being too much of a threat. Now, Annika said in her final words that she was upset that they played her before she could play them. So it's clear she you know, was going to play them. I mean, if the game is Survivor. You should be trying to play them. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that makes her a threat to Sam and Sierra. Uh, though that threat was theoretically a bit further down the line. Her intent was, of course, to vote out Andy now. Then Sam next, if they didn't merge and ended up at tribal council again. And then, of course, Sierra would have, you know, come after that because of Annika's tight connection to Rachel. But 
it was Sam who was really pushing to get rid of her. And we'd heard him talk about how he felt having all three women stay was threatening to him. Mm -hmm. Now, in retrospect, Annika told Dalton Ross that, you know, the most the, the more she got to know Sam, the more she appreciated his intelligence as someone she could work with. But the more he got to know her, it seemed like he felt more threatened by her. Mm -hmm. and, and I think she's right about that last part. But I have to question her statement about appreciating him more as someone to work with. Unless she's really claiming she was going to throw Sierra aside to keep Sam if they ended up back mm. at tribal council again under her planned world. Yeah. I mean, I think this is an interesting position that she finds herself in as far as being a threat to a particular person. And that really is Sam. And we've we've discussed that your threat level can be based upon mm -hmm. someone fearful that their game will be negatively affected if you stay in the game. And if we really look at where Sam's positioned himself, he has Sierra and he has Andy. And what does Annika want? Annika wants Andy voted out. Sam mm -hmm. needs Andy because Andy's a vote for Sam. And then what's happening with Sierra? Well, she's part of this breadwinners alliance with Annika and Rachel, and Sam's not involved in that alliance. Right. So that's a threat to him. And also Sierra, who is his other third, you know, mm -hmm. or is the third in his three, if you right. will. And so I think in Sam's world, this is all coming back to Annika. And so she is definitely a threat to him because he doesn't want his three to be broken up in any way because he's not controlling Annika like he's controlling Andy. He's not necessarily controlling Sierra. I do feel like that's more of a, a duo that, and they're both kind of on right. even playing fields there, but he's got Andy. So Sam is really the most powerful of that three mm -hmm. because Andy is his and Sierra is with him. And so Annika is creeping in over here, wanting to get rid of Andy. Sam's not having it. Right. Right. Exactly. All right. Well, the seventh rule covers idols and advantages and game mechanics. And, you know, she didn't have anything of her own, um, but she lost her vote. Mm -hmm. uh, she said in confessional that, uh, and I mentioned this earlier, she felt her lost vote wasn't an issue because she was confident in her alliances. She was half right. Her mm -hmm. lost vote wasn't an issue, but that's because the three who voted her out would have done it anyway, whether she had a vote yeah. or not. You know, yes. three three is bigger than one, but you know what? Three is also bigger than two. It is, but I still hate that this whole lose your vote thing happened because yeah, it wasn't. They, ugh, anyway, right. I won't yes. I won't convince about that again. Yeah, you know, so. Uh, yeah, again, she, you know, like I said, she was half right. You know. Well, and I do think that it's interesting and we should probably spend just a little bit of time on this. The fact that she didn't have a vote and I realize three is more than two, regardless it is. But the fact that when someone doesn't have a vote, they are now becoming almost um, feeling like they do not have an ability to negotiate or to be part of the discussions because they don't have a vote, which I think is fair in a way because yeah, I mean, I can't vote for anyone. So I really don't have any pull, but I also don't feel like people should be so quick to just roll over and say, well, I don't have a vote. So mm -hmm. what am I supposed to do? I can't. No, I think you still need to be playing that. Was it right. Omar? That was like, Over, still yeah. kind of, yeah. Like creeping through, even though he didn't have a vote and he was like, I'm still going to control things as much as I can. That I think is the better way to play, even if you don't have a vote, mm -hmm. but yes, three is more than two. So it wouldn't have really mattered anyway. Yes, Omer, who will be our guest here, as planned, in uh, about three weeks, I believe. Yes. So, um, so, yeah. Now, I you mentioned that some people don't really push as much. I certainly didn't see that with Annika. I think to her, having a vote, not having a vote, she was still project managing. You well, know? she and was project was managing, too. yes. But it was also, she didn't, it didn't affect her because she, she thought, well, I'm in a good place, so it won't matter anyway. Right. And so it it is interesting that there's this thing that happens when someone doesn't have a vote and that it can affect how they end up talking to the other players mm -hmm. or negotiating their space. And if she thinks that she's in a good place, it's, it doesn't matter either way. Right. But this is why I just don't I don't like that component oh, yeah. at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah. 
All right, well, we can move on to Appendix A, which is about players keeping their end goals in mind when voting. My trend. Your tr Oh, okay, yes. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what I do? Um, and we talk about voting out the weak, then the strong, then the weak, then the strong. But as we always say, the real key is looking at what benefits you in terms of alliances in, mm -hmm. and your end game. Um, and it seems clear that is what Sam and Sierra were looking at here. Sam mm -hmm. specifically said that while Andy may be weak in challenges, quote, long term, I don't trust Annika. So he was literally looking at his end goals. And I think he was absolutely right not to trust her in that longer time frame while he has Andy pretty much locked in right now. Yes. And this is what I think is happening more often in the newer era. I just feel like there's this need or desire or want to keep players around who are not going to necessarily be a threat to a particular mm -hmm. person like you, there's that there, there seems to be that third player and I don't want to start naming individuals because I'm not trying to put anyone in this right. in this spot but it is very interesting to me that there there's this idea that well I can I can control this person or I can manipulate this person or I know that I if I bring this person along with me I have vote number two mm -hmm. and i can respect that i'm not saying that that's a bad game move at all but there is this concern and this is something we've talked about is the longer that that person is in the game the more desirous they become to a lot of people to make it to the final three right and they end up potentially taking a spot away from someone else because all of a sudden everyone is like oh well i would like to sit next to that person too and that person has gotten there because someone else has been like this is the person I'm going to help because they're going to help me. But then when it gets to the end, you might be walking out the door because now this person is getting that spot in that final three area. Yeah. But when it comes down to it at this stage of the game, you're Sam. Would you rather bring Andy along who seems to be a solid ally slash extra vote mm -hmm. essentially, or would you rather bring Annika along, who is long term working against you? Oh, I'm not you know. saying that it's the bad choice at right. all. It's just that this seems to be more of a trend that we're seeing as of late, where there is this idea that I'm going to keep the person around who is not necessarily the greatest in challenges or the best strategist or the person who is... I mean, my mm -hmm. God, the meltdown that Andy had on the mat in, I think in years past an old school survivor, that person is not going to be kept in the game, but new school survivor is this idea that I can use that person. And I'm not saying that that is a bad game move. Sam is doing the right thing right. for Sam, but what becomes concerning, I think is the longer that that person is in the game, then it, and you're ticking down the numbers and all of a sudden they're in the final three because yeah. um they've been kept along for so long i mean and that's, that's just it's where a lot of people are expecting andy to get to well and this yeah. is what i'm saying so this is this is the trend i was just like it's, i thought it was quite fascinating that we're seeing this happen again where it's one of those circumstances where you're like oh wow that person is that person's definitely going home mm -hmm. and then that person doesn't go home and that person is there at the end yeah i mean how long did people expect you to go home you know uh, uh, th last this, yes right this is what I, this is what yeah. this is what i'm saying it's yeah. it's a very interesting thing to see happening on screen for sure mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, getting back to, uh, you know, specifically this situation, I think, um, you know, and we've talked a lot about Sam, but Sierra also discussed before the immunity challenge that she was in the middle. She yeah. could go with the women or the guys, and she had to decide what was the best for her game. Now, unlike Tiffany Seely, she went with the guys. Uh, mm. uh, more specifically, she went with Sam, which, as I mentioned earlier, was what I had predicted. And I, I think it really does or really goes back to the fact that she does have such a tight bond specifically with him. Mm -hmm. you know, yes, she's in with the women, too. But we've talked about this. Annika and Rachel are the tight duo in that group. So yes. she could go with them and be on the outs or she could go with Sam and Andy and be on the ins. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now it's ends. I like that. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, um, it is about time to wrap things up. So what are your final thoughts on Annika? Well, Annika, I do think that you came into this game and you had a good plan. You wanted to strategize. And we got to see a lot of that. And I think that that was lovely. And you were truly someone who was blindsided. And I do always appreciate a great blindside. But that should allow you some comfort because a great blindside means that you were a great player, really, because they wanted to get you out so badly, but they managed to do so in kind of an incredible fashion and keeping you completely in the dark. Too bad for Rachel because she's right along there with you. But Annika, you really did an excellent job, I think, playing this game, although there were some parts of you, the managerial components that we discussed, that maybe you should have kept in check a little bit. But in the end, I don't think, as David has already indicated, that that necessarily hurt you so much so. You really did get out-strategized and outplayed by the people who are on your tribe with you. You were someone that Sam saw as a threat. I think you were someone that Sierra considered a threat as well. And in looking at the numbers and the permutations and what was better for their games, you unfortunately were not better for their games. So Annika, it was lovely watching you on our screens. Thank you so much. And I wish you all the best. Yeah. I have, you know, very similar thoughts here. You know, we, we saw friction between Annika and Sam since pretty much the beginning of the game. Annika believed it was just brother, sister bickering and everything was hunky dory. Uh, Sam apparently did not. Uh, but as we've discussed earlier, Annika, you know, told Dalton Ross, she didn't think her bossiness or leadership role is what sent her home. And that's not why Sam was gunning for her overall. She's probably right that it wasn't the key reason, but it sure didn't help her case. It's hard mm. to look ahead and decide you trust and want to work with someone when you don't feel they're treating you very well. Sam already felt that Annika was a potential problem in the long term. She had her tight duo with Rachel, and they had the breadwinners alliance of all three women. Even though he trusted Sierra, voting out Andy would have put him in a very difficult situation of a potential 2-2 split if they'd end up back at tribal council. By taking out Annika now, he eliminated that potential problem. The fact that she rubbed him the wrong way contributed by being a more obvious indicator of the way she felt about him and how she would play the game. But I do think he probably would have come to the same conclusion no matter what. The issue then became one of strategic ability. In rule after rule, we concluded that Annika was simply outplayed and outstrategized. She was unable to hide her opinions when it came to her social game. But every time they had an issue, they talked it out and she left feeling like it was all good. It wasn't. Sam also talked a lot about Andy in negative ways, convincing Annika that he was good with the plan to vote out Andy. He wasn't. Sierra seemed enthusiastic about the Women's Alliance and Annika thought for sure that she was a solid number there. She wasn't. Annika was confident that she had a full read on exactly where everyone stood in the tribe. She didn't. And it was such a shock for her to find that out that her brain couldn't even digest the situation and make sense of it. She was certain everything was going according to the plan. And it was. The problem was the plan in question was Sam and Sierra's, not hers. And that is why Annika lost. Oh, that was very, very fun. Thank you for that, David Bloomberg. <laughs> Thank I you. That immensely. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Well, before we get to our predictions for next episode, I mm. want to remind everyone again that the rules we just discussed are available in both poster form. That's right. T-shirt form and T-shirt form again this time as a checklist right. so again go to rob has website.com slash yx lost feed yes you definitely should and you should also try to follow us on all of our social media platforms that do exist out there as well i am at jessica lewis 89 on twitter i am also at jessica lewis 6789 on instagram i am not as active as mr david bloomberg over here 
but he has so many social media platforms that he has a linked tree that lists everything out for you all to see. So, David, tell them where they can find you. Well, I am all over the place. Uh, there is my Linktree account, as you mentioned, at Linktree slash David Bloomberg with a dot before the EE in the URL. Uh, but you can also, you know, uh, find me on various podcasts. Uh, now, there's one fewer of those uh, right now because hopefully everyone who watches Big Brother has uh, also already watched or listened to Why Blank won and the others lost uh, with uh, Big Brother 21. Ovi Kabir as my co-host. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that in the books, I am done doing double duty on the Why Blank Lost podcast for a little while. Mm -hmm. However, I am still co-hosting the Tradar podcast for the Traders Canada season two uh, on the Tradar network. So uh, you can find me there. Uh, other accounts besides my link tree, you can find me directly on Twitter and Blue Sky as at David Bloomberg on threads as at David Bloomberg TV. Uh, of course, I'm on the video platforms, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, also is at David Bloomberg TV, where, you know, until wedding busyness uh, caught up with me, I had been posting three or more videos per day. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I recently, last week, I believe, uh, surpassed 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. You so, did? Yes. Yay! So I Excellent encourage... Job. Encourage people to join the fun and subscribe over there. Uh, you know, right now I'm posting, of course, clips from Survivor, uh, polishing off the Big Brother clips, um, plus others from shows like The Traders Canada, The Summit, House of Villains, and The Anonymous. Oh, look at you. Yes. You're so busy. Well, and I now am. you have so much more time on your hands because you're down one podcast. Yes, yes, and a show that took up a lot, a lot of time, Big Brother. Yes, so, oh my word. It's so, like it's on all the time. It It is. It's literally, you know, 24-7 live feed. I know, it's on so, all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Uh, so, but that's behind us now. Uh, it is. And so, uh, we can look ahead to our predictions. And it appears... That there will be a merge. Uh, I suppose, does, they, they, you know, they could surprise us and like do something crazy, like make it two tribes or something when he says drop your buffs. Um, but it seems to be about the right timing, I think. Yeah. Um, so aside from that, it appears Rome is back to going after Saul, uh, presumably to, I don't know, try and target him at the merge. Uh, beyond that, we don't really get much. Uh, no. I, I, I do think that the fact that players on other tribes have accurately pegged Sam and Sierra as being tight allies who were running things on their tribe um, will only become more important. Oh, look, we have a puppy visiting us. You do. <laughs> you guys say hello, Ellie? Look at that this. is Ellie. This is Ellie. I wanted everybody to get to meet her. Yes. She's our newest addition. It's a little beautiful girl. <laughs> and all like the people who are just listening on audio are like, well, I'll have to take your word for it. But she's gorgeous. Yes. Look at her. Maybe you can she's post on Twitter. Bug. Yes. You know, I'm going to. I We wanted to make sure that it was all going to work with our other mm -hmm. two puppies. I think it's official. She's yes. definitely, she's doing very well. But okay, I'm going to let her good. go back upstairs now. She was probably resting with okay. Owen. Thank you so much no for bringing problem. her down. Got her? <laughs> Okay, there we are. Okay, All back right. to predictions. Well, my prediction is that that is a very cute puppy. She very, is so cute. cute. So, <laughs> She's uh, a sweetheart. Yes. Um, so anyway, the, the other tribes have, you know, figured out that Sam and Sierra are tight allies who were running mm -hmm. things on the tribe. And that will only become more important when everyone sees the result of the vote we just discussed. Like, Oh, yes. I mean, I'm not suggesting they should have done anything different. Because they really could have, but I think people are going to be like, oh, Annika's mm, gone. Mm hmm. Hmm. That's very and Rachel, strange. I'm sure Rachel's yes. going to be like throwing them all under the bus. Yes. For sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, so both of them are going to need to protect themselves. But I feel like people will initially want to work with them rather than against them. Um, because they're gonna be a group of three. And if you're mm -hmm. in there with like another small group, you merge those groups together and suddenly you have an almost majority. So, yeah, um, I, I think people will go after an apparently easy target instead. 
uh, some of the possibilities. Tiana, Teeny, mm. Saul, Rachel, uh, even Andy, possibly. Um, although, again, he's part of that three, so less likely. What about Kyle? Ky I think Tiana has kind of overtaken that spot from Kyle on that tribe. Eh, that's fair. Um, you know, I think Teeny has the connections needed. And I think Rachel could easily form them. And to me, the most likely outcome is that Tiana gets taken out for throwing Gabe under the bus. You know, I was I was feeling that as well, because I think that that was so much yeah. information <laughs> that she provided. And then the apology when she went to apologize to him. Mm -hmm. He saw right through it and knew that it was kind of just a half-ass apology. Yeah, hold on. Let's do this right. When she went to apologize. Yes, right. Big, yeah. massive air quotes there. Yeah, yeah. And and so, but I'm also looking at the, so the Blue Tribe, because we've got Caroline and Sue and Gabe as a three. I am feeling a little bit of something for Kyle, though. I, there's There's something that's bringing me back to Kyle. I feel like a lot of women are. <laughs> look at you he is a sweetheart i will say um but i'm but the one thing that i i think is interesting with kyle was the the conversation he and sue had where he was so frustrated with mm -hmm. sue because he's like i'm trying to help her so i could see him drifting and trying to attach himself elsewhere but i think the difference between he and tiana is i think that Kyle will likely find that person. He'll mm -hmm. probably, I think maybe he and Teeny might click a little bit. Just, I feel like she's going to be looking for some mm -hmm. people who are on the outs a little bit. I think I have to agree with you because I was thinking Tiana as well, because I feel like she's put herself in a position where she was very vocal with a bunch of people and they all saw yep. it. So it's not going to be a question of these are the things that she's done. They've seen her do it. And right. so it'll be an easier ability for them all to kind of wrap their brains around like, yeah, this is the person that should probably go first. Yeah. So I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. All My right. Long winded agreeing answer. <laughs> all right. Well, this has not been a long winded podcast. This has probably no. been our shortest in quite some time. So again, you know, I said it, I, I did appreciate them giving us a kind of a straightforward one here. Yes. I mean, there was still plenty to dive into, but mm -hmm. you know, there weren't as many uh, hoops as, as usual. Um, but with that said, uh, of course, you know, for the future, everyone should make sure you're subscribed to all the RHAP survivor podcasts by going to we know survivor.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, you know, select your podcast service of choice. You'll get all the great survivor content from RHAP, uh, from the Know It Alls, the BNB, Survivor International, obviously us, uh, plus other shows. Um, I also encourage people to check out the RHAP patron program at robhiswebsite.com slash patron, uh, because in addition to the podcasts I just mentioned, there are special podcasts out there that only the patrons can get. There's so much. It's yes. crazy. It's yes. crazy the amount of content that is out there. RHAP yeah. is giving you so many things to watch for yes. sure. Um, so again, you can support shows like ours and everything on the network by becoming a patron at robhaswebsite.com slash patron. And we would like to thank everyone at Rob Has a Podcast for all of the incredible work that you do. The editing, Scott St. Pierre, Jessica Sterling, thank you so much for all of the work producing, editing, putting all of the content, not just for Wide Blank Loss, but all of the incredible content that you just heard David speaking about. We truly appreciate everyone who partakes, who watches, and enjoys listening to not just us, but the entirety of the RHAP content that is provided so thank you everyone for listening thank you david bloomberg for allowing us an opportunity to just you know be one-on-one -on -one today this was nice yes was very yes nice. the me and the me and the we that's right something like that <laughs> I, I yeah i never did quite follow that whole discussion there but you know you well yes i am the me and your we <laughs> we we Good times. Good yes. Times. Well, thank you, uh, as always, Jessica. Uh, and, you know, especially uh, this week for your flexibility in recording schedule. Uh, following that rule. That's right. That's right. 
And uh, we will be back here. Normally, we say in a week, but because we were a little late this time, it'll be five days. That's right. We will see everyone very soon. Bye. Bye.